retired players, uh, the changes in terms of support of them that you would still like to see made? Well, um, I think we further what we started in 2009. Um, I, I did believe that uh, we had work to do to, to heal um, and, and to uh, make sure that everybody who has played this game um, and who is playing this game understand that the common denominator that will always unite them is that they are players, not owners. And, and again, um, sometimes in life we spend a whole heck of a lot of time trying to figure out why we're different from everybody else. When it comes to the business of football, um, there is no more uh, significant demarcation of who you are as to whether you are a player or an owner. If you are an owner, you see the world differently. If you are a player, your head gets concussed, your knees get broken, your back aches, and you break your fingers. That's our world. So we shouldn't be in a situation where there is a, a, a rift uh, or a, a, a uh, disassociation between those who uh, played this game and those who play. Um, look, the, the reality of our business is, and a lot of fans don't get it, but do you know when you become a former player? When? You become a former player usually when you are on a practice field and the general manager has decided to cut you that morning. You're cut that morning. You don't know because you're still practicing. You become a former player as you walk off the field from the practice field and into your locker room. Whatever that five minutes, 10 minutes there is from that morning when you were a current player to the time that you got cut, that's the span of time where you become a former player. So to us, it makes no sense to then draw a distinction somehow between someone who plays and someone who didn't. Because five minutes, that's when you became a former player. So as we go forward, um, yes, we have a great business arrangement with the National Football League. Do I think that that means that we should stop thinking about um, things like how do we engage in research to help former players? Um, no. We, we need to do those things. Um, if, if there comes a time when we realize uh, whether science increases or, or we come to a medically uh, justified scenario where we believe that we should be doing something better to treat, um, you know, whether it's Alzheimer's or, or, or some other type of degenerative condition, what we're gonna do is approach the league about uh, making those changes even though we already have a CBA. I mean, one critical issue right now, and, I, and again, I know there is a tremendous amount of focus on concussions, um, but one of the issues that concerns me right now is the issue of chronic pain. Um, you know, when you, when you look at the number of players who are suffering from chronic pain, as opposed to those who are suffering or who have a concussion in every year, I'm willing to believe now that, that the, the number of players suffering from chronic pain is on a four to five time scale. It's that illness of chronic pain that can lead to the early onset of depression. That it's chronic pain that might lead our players uh, to have a dependency on, on painkillers or, or alcohol. That those things then result in strains on marriage and family. So to the extent that, that we continue to look at those issues that approach our collective family of players, um, those are things that we are continuing to fight for uh, and continuing to research. We know that our current and former players are suffering from health and safety issues, um, many of which that are going to continue well into the world after they, they leave football. One of the closest parallels we were able to find, um, given what our players go through, is what the, the military has been going through on treating their, their soldiers for everything from PTSD to injuries to uh, post-military career issues. So we submitted ourselves to come up with the best um, plan to allocate those resources. What do you see as being the end game or goal with regards to the money? You know, good question. Um, um, 
the end game, hopefully, is to come up with um, a, a, a research protocol um, that addresses a number of critical issues, whether it's coming up with ways of, of testing helmets and putting money into research to come up with uh, safer equipment. We want to look at things like field surfaces. We want to look at preventative med medication. We want to look at alternative training regimens. Uh, how long does the body need to recover? The concussion issue is one that we've pushed um, hard on since we came here. Um, it's hard to believe that when I got, when I started this job, the head of the league's concussion committee was a rheumatologist. Um, so have we come a long way? Yes. But only by engaging in a very disciplined way of trying to understand the problems that we're facing and coming up with a disciplined plan to, to deal with those problems, we will effectuate change for, for the better only when we embrace the realities of who we are, what we do, and where we need to be. Who we are is a group of very young players playing a game uh, that at times is, it, it can be dangerous. Um, what we do is a, a, a game and a process of football uh, that has inherent risk. Um, there are necessary and, and very foreseeable consequences of, of the game that our players play. When, when the league embraces and accept those things, that's when we can truly move to the last category of where we need to be. I mean, uh, you, you said if the NFL fails to provide uh, a safe working environment, you've made a point of saying the NFLPA reserves the right to seek any relief that the players or you believes appropriate. How far would you take that? As far as we need to take it in order to keep our players safe. Um, that's how we make every decision here. I know that uh, people are sort of fond of, of, of casting this and and. Um, as adversarial uh, a world as possible. But the reality is, um, if you have to take for as a fact that what our players do puts them in harm's way. Do you ever see it getting to the point of a strike being necessary? Um, I always see it as a point of we will look at every option that we have in order to keep our players safe. I never want anybody from our staff to walk into a locker room and say to our players, we're only going to work as hard as we think we need to work in order to keep you safe. So when it comes to taking action to making sure that our guys are safe, um, we will do whatever we think is necessary to keep them as safe as possible.